Hey, hello, good morning, good morning. So I am going live today to talk about the the last four months of this year and how you can have your most successfully sensitive 2018 in the next four months. So if we haven't met yet before, my name's Cara and I am a coach, I'm a writer and a speaker and I support sensitive change makers to really step up and embody all their gifts while they create compassionate change and while they have an amazing life, relationship, work, etc, etc. So I'm really all about... Um, understanding who you are as a sense of women and understanding all those gifts that you have and making it really abundantly clear that you are completely enough exactly as you are and all you are doing is reclaiming all of the, the women that you are already you know it's not about being better it's not about being the best it's it's about understanding that you are already enough. Um, how I work with um, how I work with clients is either one to one, face to face, or in um, or via the technology of the internet, or in groups like within my sisterhood, which is my group coaching community um, online program. So I'm talking today about the next four months because we really are entering this exciting back to school vibe which is courtesy of us moving into the Virgo season and also we have said goodbye as I'm sure you're aware to a pretty choppy summer which has brought up a lot um, via the eclipses and retrogrades and for many of us we were feeling quite stuck uh, we were feeling probably having that questioning of what am I doing where am I going um, what is what is my big why or recommitting to our big why's and really probably facing some of our inner fear freaks and I know I have done a lot of, of facing up a work with my inner control freak which has been quite big for me so you know that's been going on and we're now in this place where it's like we've got four months of 2018 and instead of thinking like we're on the countdown to the next year how can you really use what's going on for you so far this year to heal um, as I was saying, you know, I'm just looking down here at my nose, how to use those shitty situations that have been brought up by the eclipses to really transform what you need to, to move forward, to get the goal, to leave the trash um, and how you use what's going on, not as excuses. So, you know, the more we check in with the moon cycles and our own cycle, it's never about using that as an excuse about why we can't do something or why we're doing something. It's about understanding how that impacts us as a sensitive woman so that we can we can really feel supported and it's about giving ourselves permission not giving ourselves a reason to procrastinate so we are in this go get them energy now you know this is really apparent and everybody feels it around this time anyway but especially if you are connected with your cycle and with the moon you'll be really 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 feeling it right now so I've had some great questions that I want to cover and if you are catching this on replay or you're with me on live, ask away, ask me any questions that are relevant to you as a sensitive change maker. You know, you have got four amazing months left to create compassionate change that can be in your own life, like with your own relationships, with your family life, with your spiritual practice. It might be with the work that you're doing with communities or um, out in the world with your with with whatever you're creating it could be macro it could be major and um, but this is really all about how you embody all of your empathy and all of your creativity and all of your generosity without experiencing overwhelming burnout um, and really doing what you need to do to look after yourself and be your well-being warrior so I'm going to go to the questions because I think they're going to cover off um, quite a bit. So Sarah asked a really great question, which was, why am I justifying my decisions to people rather than just being accountable? And then she asked about how she can ensure she's not giving away her power over the next four months and beyond. 
So that is a really big one. Justifying our decisions, we have really been conditioned by the society that we have been brought up in to, to justify our decisions because there is a sense of, you know, we're never quite enough, we're never quite good enough. We're always in that kind of co competition mode um, or we're always trying to prove something and I think that's where justifying comes when we feel we have something to prove or we feel we're not good enough in some way so if you are in a place where you're thinking I really I, I'm really tired of justifying my decisions and I just want to be accountable I would encourage you to check in with why you think it is you are justifying your decisions like wh where are you doing it who are the people you're doing it to is it across the board is there a specific trigger that's going on for you Take it, take some deep breaths with it and just go, okay, so I want to be accountable and being accountable is so powerful because being accountable enables you to fully own all of who you are, right? When we're justifying, we are, we are leaking energy, we are feeling like we are less than, that we have to prove something um, and when you are in a place to shift that, we're, we're, we're not having, like I was saying at the start, we're not being the best you know we are already all of who we are we're reclaiming who who we already are when you step into that and that was a big um aha for me during the summer when i was reconnecting with my big why i spent a bit of time like really just checking in with my big why's what you know where i'm moving towards the experiences the feelings that i am embodying and i'm experiencing every day and then i and i recognized that everything stems from that recl that reclamation right i am reclaiming who i am I'm not i'm not finding it externally we're never going to find anything any validation if you are justifying your decisions you're looking for validation right so what where do you need to be accountable to yourself and that comes really from practice and it also comes from being present and in fact anything that i ever talk about it always just comes back to you know it, it, it how can you be more present with yourself you know how can you bring a deeper sense of awareness to this moment right now and when you do that that uh, so much other crap falls away and you're in that space of going, oh, yeah, okay, so this is what it's about. So for Sarah, I would say really look at, um, you know, where you're justifying those decisions um, and how, how you can find the validation that you're looking for within yourself. So, you know, it's absolutely cool to want other people to um, be on board with our ideas or to... Um, you know, to, you know, it's a natural human thing, isn't it? We want other people to agree with us, ultimately. That doesn't, that doesn't always happen. But, you know, if you can go, right, that's cool. I understand this about myself. However, while I'm externally waiting for validation, I'm stuck. So instead, let me go into my practice, what my meditation practice is, what my journaling practice is, and look for and find, because it's there, the approval that I'm looking for from myself and then you know being accountable is is such uh, being accountable if you're struggling with being accountable um, and let me know whether you're on live or replay if this is resonating for you if you're struggling with being accountable you may find that you're um your inner perfectionist is playing up because our inner perfectionist does n never ever wants to be wrong right so check in where am i giving away some of my power to my inner perfectionist and just check in and say what is the story here and how can i just release some of that and with our inner perfectionist it is actually about taking imperfect action and being accountable um, and owning our mistakes that really that really allows us to step away from the inner perfectionist so I hope that helps and then similar to Sarah so Sarah then asked about ensuring she doesn't give away her power over the next four months uh, Natalie also asked how to recognize when you are giving away your power um, and then kind of similar to that listening and tuning in to yourself um, how do you do that when you uh, when you feel out of kilter which is a great question so if you're giving away your power 
you are going to feel like Sarah was saying earlier that you're justifying your decisions you are going to feel that you're seeking external validation you are going to feel like you're waiting for something you are going to feel like it's never enough there's never enough you are going to feel um you're going to feel less than uh, you're going to feel the, the the thing is is that ultimately you'll feel it in yourself and the more you sit in stillness with yourself for a few minutes 10 minutes whatever you do whatever you can do every day and i do recommend that you go for 10 minutes plus you understand you feel those feelings in your body and your body tells you your body will tell you like it'll be in your gut it'll be in your throat you'll feel it in your heart you'll feel it in your body if if you're giving your power away you will feel it you definitely will and it, for me now because i've gotten so connected with myself i can I, I i can feel it but of course there are times that we're also in our heads so this is where our support network is so important this is where where your communities are so important where the people that are supporting you and um, like kind of being able to be very honest and open with them with people who have your back because they can also point out that you are giving away your power if it's a, a deep entrenched pattern you can have that mirrored back to you by people who've got your back okay so use the people who are your support network um to ask them and that can be your guides you know that can be if you speak to your guides and um, that can be you know having those conversations with yourself it can be your um you know the the women that are in you know mentoring groups that you're in or a coach that you're working with because they will be able to show you if you are in your own head where you are giving away your power so that it would be that would be very very crucial and uh, that's very very crucial for me i always um have people to support me because no matter what we can we get in our own heads and we find it very hard to get out of there okay so um doo -doo -doo -doo, how to not give away your power set an intention you know set an intention i I'm setting this intention that I am that I am fully in my power over the next four months. You know, set that intention, be very clear about it, and any time you feel that you're slipping away from that, come back to that. Come back, take some deep breaths, and just come back to that. Because the more you affirm it and connect that, because that is a, something that's very connective to your higher self, you know, being fully in your power that's a truth for you the more you the more you um affirm it and that's not just like a head mouth thing you know i've talked about this with my groups you know you when you you move it into your body right you work with this when you visualize when you uh move your body whether that's your yoga or your running you set that and you bring it into your cells you bring it into your body as well okay so the last part which is a really good one is listening how do you how to listen and tune into myself and my soul i want to be more true to myself and how to do that when i feel out of kilter well the first part of that i would say is you probably feel out of kilter because you're not tuned in to yourself and your soul and um, as much as you could be and um the the really the, the way to do that is to practice it doesn't just happen um it takes practice it takes commitment um to to sit in stillness with yourself and you know i know with with this question natalie was saying quite often she finds her mind wanders or she starts to doze off that's totally fine that's exactly what happened to me you know i was i hated meditation when i first started hated it would have done anything to avoid it because i knew the moment i got still i was going to hear what i had been running away from okay so there's some major avoidance that we do to go into silence and our mind chatter is one of it but when you start to hear that chatter all you need to do is go back to the breath 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 it's not many many times it takes and then it'll be longer and it'll be longer and it'll be longer um uh so yeah that's that's kind of where where i would say you know it's about the practice and it's about yeah i i really didn't like meditation when i first started doing it and i did when i was going to classes and it would be the relaxation at the end i would doze off um 
but don't you know don't discredit the journey that you're going on as as the vital component of this so the amount of times you notice the mind chatter the amount of times you notice that you're dozing off right notice it and then say right so this time i'm going to do it a little bit differently or i'm i'm not going to let this stop me from doing it because this is ego this is the inner fear freaks that will attach onto this now and go oh well i'm not good at meditation because i keep thinking too many thoughts so i'm going to stop doing it or i'm going to question myself about this instead just go this is all part of it hearing those stories hearing those voices those voices um dozing off this is all part of it and i as much as i can i'm going to embrace this okay so how this is resonating for you let me know if you've got any questions so far on this um yeah i was mentioned at the start i think it's really important that we as sensitive change makers we are really closely connected with the the moon cycles and what's going on i think it's really important to take the 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 gold from that you know learn what you need to learn from it but but work it with you you know um everybody is different so when you hear things about retrogrades and um uh, solar re solar returns and eclipses and everything you know it's all good information but you still are your own person so you can still um you can still totally do everything that you want to do or not do but just be aware that it is great to work your energy like to work with your energy that's why i say when you know your cycle and if you didn't um catch it i did a, a great session on it um i've done a couple of sessions over the summer on using your cycle um to harness your to harness the energy because it's really really important that we do that um, and getting the gold you know look at what ha came up for you during the summer don't just like push it all away and say right that's over now i'm in september because we have got this go get energy now it's really in this kind of um it's definitely more of a masculine energy this 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 september it's, it's coming but use the feminine elements of um understanding and um reflection to take what you need to from the 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 the, the moments of feeling stuck or like you're wading through treacle to, to take that in what you need to take in what you needed to heal appreciate that as you come forward and as you move through so i would love to know what's resonated with you where are you giving away your power you know where are you justifying or looking for justification or validation what's happened for you during the summer that you have got the gold from and you're taking it forward or if you want to go into that in a bit of depth come and join the free community the sense of superstar movement i'll pop the link uh, below come and join our free community and you know find find some um you know find some support to go through that right like kind of take what you need to from what's been going on for you and how you're moving forward and also let me know what are you setting yourself up for in the next four months like how um do you want to apply and use your sense of superpowers to have a truly phenomenal next four months and that doesn't mean that it's all going to be and uh, we're not going to be pooing like rainbows over the next four months but like what how do you want to how do you want to kind of really use the energy over the next four months for for you for your business for your work for your creativity for your relationships so i will see you very soon sending you lots of love bye